<laughs> it's been a long time since I have um, recorded. Um, I had to take some time to um, ground myself. I was uh, I was in a humongous state of um, mania, uh, and so I finally got myself a little bit more calmed down and settled, so I can explain things a little, hopefully a little better, but I'm excited. I'm, I'm so excited to um, be uh, recording again and posting on YouTube. So hello, everybody. Hello, the community. community I always say it wrong. Community of humanity. <laughs> um, I've had a good uh, few days getting myself grounded, and hopefully um, as I uh, present this, um, I will present it calmly. <laughs> and all that good stuff. Okay, so let's just get started, okay? So what I'm going to be going over today, um, like I said, I um, wanted to go over kind of a syllabus kind of thing of like what I'm going to be attempting to present um, on this platform. And um, it's this is going to this is going to be quite the project. I've been working on this stuff for about a decade now. And um <clears throat> So yeah, getting it out there in, a more, in an organized way, it's going to take a little while, maybe a year or two, maybe even three or four years, who knows. But this is what I'm going to be covering on this channel, and it's going to be like my life work. And um, and anyway, let's just go into it. So I decided to go over what is my umbrella identification. Um, I kind of like, I'm, in a, I'm a psyche in, in the cosmos, <laughs> experiencing... Um, consciousness in the physical world, in the external world. Um, I look at myself as a philosopher, astrologer, and metaphysician. So that's kind of how I would umbrella myself, although I kind of would consider myself an autodidactic polymath, a uh, spiritualist, syncretist, occultist also. But for simplicity, <laughs> I'm just going to say, you know, philosopher, astrologer, metaphysician. Um <clears throat> But I was given the birth name of Janine Daniel Kane, <laughs> um, Hebrew, actually. My mom, my mom was very religious, and um, she named um, her children after um, biblical, very biblical names. Janine Daniel Kane is the bearer of the spear, graced by the mercy of God and only judged by God. It's a beautiful name. So thanks, Mom. Um, so umbrella area of interest, um, you'll notice that, as I proceed, that uh, I that I'll be covering a multiplicity of subjects, um, but I think the umbrella area of interest is basically consciousness. Um, I, everything I've ever studied, I've always I think uh, until recently I didn't realize, but I was really studying the nature of consciousness. So when I was studying astrology or psychology. Um, philosophy, mythology, um, ancient history, mathematics, I always was looking at it, looking at it in a way of how is this relating to what consciousness is? Because to me, consciousness is, is the most important thing. Um, and the most important thing to investigate. I mean, we're conscious. I mean, it's a, a miracle. It's amazing. We're a, we're aware, we're participating in an external realm with each other. And so what does all this mean? And so um, I think at 14, after a nervous breakdown, <laughs> um, I had, you know, an epiphanic um, awakening about, you know, consciousness. And uh, ever since I'd been on this, this journey of trying to figure out what consciousness was. So anyway, that's it. Umbrella area of interest, consciousness. Um, the umbrella topics, um, so I can kind of simplify it down so it makes more sense. I'll be talking about individuation, healing complex trauma, and the conjunctive use of astrology. Um, <clears throat> the goal is to heal consciousness uh, and to break this, the collective cycle of abuse. And um, as such, I want to de-stigmatize personality disorders, and I want to de-stigmatize astrology. Uh, here I am, I have a borderline personality disorder, and I'm an astrologer, I'm like a walking stigma. <laughs> um, 
Okay, so tried in astrology, this virtual platform um, on YouTube. It's kind of a I've kind of wanted to create a round table for the community of humanity. So, um, so subscription to this virtual room or, and or making uh, comments on this platform is a nonverbal agreement of mutual respect. And for most people subscribing to this platform, they're not, they don't really need to be told this, but I kind of just want to lay this out there. Um, you know, so, cause it, you know, there's always people that like to be malicious. So, um, any malicious comments or disrespectful um, comments will be deleted and removed and blocked from this platform because I want this platform to be a safe and uh, kind place. Um, it's a place where we, each one of us are going to be practicing healthy boundaries, um, which is the problems with what, when you have trauma or you're not raised in a, in a way that can help you understand your place in the cosmos, who you are as a human being with consciousness in the world. We don't have boundaries. Trauma breaks boundaries. And so a part of my healing process is creating a platform for which I can practice healthy boundaries. Um, so also this platform uh, is to grow knowledge of the individual and the collective. It's also to, to share varying perspectives to gain insight. So, um, Please uh, share your perspective. Um, you might not you might not agree with my perspective, and that's okay. I might not agree with yours, but I think it's really important um, if we want to really un gain insight into reality of things. Into uh, this, then we have to. We, it's important for us to share because each one of us is a different perspective of consciousness in the external world, and so it's very important to me to. Um, share perspective so that we can gain a greater insight into what consciousness is and and all that also um, this this platform is a place to evolve and to heal the um, anima mundi the world soul or the psyche of the cosmos and I'm horrible at Latin I I try uh, evolutionist mundane anime I think is how to say it I'm sure there's somebody who knows Latin who's like going, oh God, she just botched that up. But it's okay. I, I, my reading of Latin is a lot better than me speaking it. But I, I've always kind of, I'm like really not good at Latin, but I like Latin. Anyway, so uh, the evolution of the world soul, anyway, is what I'm gay, what I'm, what my goal is. All right, so these are the things I'm going to be covering in the next I don't know, a few years, how long it takes me to get this stuff out that I've been working on for a decade. <laughs> um, it's kind of overwhelming, but I think I've organized it pretty well. <laughs> so first off, um, because I mo I'm mainly like a metaphysician, like studying philosopher, metaphysician, astrologer, focusing on consciousness and what it is. So first we're going to be looking at um, the structure of consciousness. So the first thing I think we'll notice about consciousness is that it's cyclic in nature. And as such, the prime symbol of consciousness is the circle. And I think I've brought that up uh, in one of my last videos, but we're going to be going over this a whole lot more. And so um, looking at the structure of consciousness, we're going to be studying and I'll be sharing insights um, on astrology and astrotheology. We're going to be looking at mythology and comparative religion and cosmogony. We're going to be looking at analytical psychologies and theories of complex trauma and personality disorders, personality theory. We're going to be looking at sacred geometry and ancient symbolism because all of these things overlapped gives us a greater understanding of the structure of consciousness. And so when we understand that consciousness is cyclic, and that the prime symbol of consciousness is the circle. And I'll be showing how all this works in. So and I'm going to be, um, I'll be, I'll write a better uh, a book list. So if anybody's interested in reading the same, similar books that I'm reading, this is my mentor's book, The Celestial Renaissance, A Revolution of Astrology by Kelly Lee Phipps. I got this book um, years ago for, I think, 65 75 bucks if I went on Amazon lately I don't actually I haven't been on it for a while but the last time I checked this book was like literally a fifteen hundred dollars 
Like it's, so it's, I'm really lucky. Um, it has my mentor's handwriting on it, which is super cool. So whoever sold this book, hi, William. I have no idea if you're even here on this, in this world, worldly domain anymore, but um, thanks for selling this book to me. Anyway, so I'm going to be go, I'm going to be using a lot from Kelly Lee Phipps work. Um, I use my mentor. He had a, his magnum opus he didn't finish called the Tao of astrology. Um, and they have, I think there's a PDFs available of that. Um, I'll create links. I think his mother generously put that out in the uh, public domain. So we'll be doing that. Um, another uh, person I'll be going, I mean, there's a lot of people I'll be studying from, but these are my two favorites. Um, Glenn Perry, astro psychology. Um, he's amazing. Um, he has, um, a, so Kelly has like a Taoist viewpoint. Him and I um, corresponded a lot, and so I'm working from um, my, uh, from learning from him. So when I talk about like dualistic unity, um, a lot of that was influenced by my mentor and how he taught astrology. And so, and then anyway, he he and he his work overlapped with Glenn Perry's um, because Glenn Perry talks kind of overlaps the um, psychology. Um, with astrology, and he even goes into Eric Erickson's stages of development in relationship to um, astrology. So we'll be looking at that. And then also, of course, The Ancients, one of my favorite books. Um, I don't know if you can see this. Uh, Marcus Manilius, Astronomica. So if you ever have a chance to get this book, that would be great. Um, another book, My this is my favorite, I have to admit, I love Firmicus Maternus. He's amazing. Um, ancient astrology and theory and practice, the Mathesis. Um, definitely, this is online, free online PDF. Wonderful. So, if you're interested in learning more about astrology and its foundations, Firmicus Maternus and uh, Marca, Marcus Manilius are amazing. So, okay, so that's so that's what we're going to be doing. So, um, we're going to be focusing on consciousness, uh, metaph metaphysically, and um, what is consciousness? So we look at its structure. It's cyclic in nature. And I'll be using these, uh, I'll be using astrology and astrotheology, mythology and all that um, to show you that that I think that this is true. Um, so astrotheology, Santos Bonacci, um, he was a mentor of mine in astrotheology. Of mythology, um, Joseph Campbell, obviously analytical the uh, psychology, Carl Jung, um, and so anyway, so we'll be I'll be teaching all this on my channel, teaching myself too. <laughs> um, then uh, because of because con consciousness is cyclic in nature, it has a dualistically unified archetypal process. And, and so we'll be looking at the dualistic unified archetypal processes in the nature of reality. So one of the first things I'll be showing um, is what is dualistic unity. I think it's really important to understand dualistic unity, the concept of dualistic unity when you first understand, when you're first studying astrology, um, because the ancients, in my humble opinion, the ancients were everything alluded to this, this, the, the merging of opposites, where oh, everything's opposite. Everything's um, an axial uh, functioning of opposites, a interpolation of opposites in order to find wholeness within those opposites. Opposites work together. They are a, um, a pursuit, a, an archetypal procedure of each other. But I'm going to talk more about that. And it's really important as we study um, astrology and astrotheology and all this stuff and consciousness, it's, I think it's important to understand what dualistic unity is. So we'll be talking about that. Um, so the concept of dualistic unity, um, we're talking about the concepts of equilibrium and disequilibrium. So we'll be going into that. And we're going to be learning more about that. Um, when we're talking about the function of consciousness, and uh, we're dealing with dualistic unified concepts, we're dealing with like, the first, the prime dichotomy is what I call it. It's you have the external world and the internal world. I'm kind of jumping ahead here, but we have we're dealing with um, unconscious and conscious 
domains of the of consciousness and how they function. They function in dualistic unity. Carl Jung talks about this, or he alludes to this idea. He was an astrologer. Um, uh, so we're really trying consciousness, the function of consciousness is trying to move unconscious material into conscious awareness and learning from that, integrating that into our conscious awareness. Um, and so it's basically the individuation process. It's the process of divine humility. And we're going to go more into that. I talked a little bit about it in my previous videos. Um, when we're dealing with the function of consciousness as a dualistic unified archetypal process of functioning opposites, we're dealing with the great law of enandiodromia. And anybody who knows me, I constantly say this word. They're like, oh my God, she's saying the word again, enandiodromia. But that... <laughs> I'm not just saying it to sound smart, okay? Um, <laughs> um, maybe I was before, but not now. Um, just kidding. So it, the great law of enandiodromia, it's, it pervades everything. It pervades, um, this law pervades every single subject that you can think of. Mathematics, sacred geometry, uh, psychology, astrology, mythology, it all enandiodromia. It's because we're dealing with the cyclic, or excuse me, the cyclic nature of reality. We're dealing with the equilibrium and disequilibrium. So what is enandiodromia? I'll definitely be teaching more about that. But enandiodromia is, the definition is superabundance of any phenomenon lead to its opposite. Okay, so we're dealing with um, what, must, what comes up must come down. But with, these, this, with this swing of disequilibrium comes a process toward equilibrium. And I'll talk more about that. So um, we're also going to be looking at so all archetypal processes are procedural and dualistically unified functioning opposites. So I'll be talking more about this in my first lecture, but that's what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about what dualistic unity is, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about um, dualistically unified functioning opposites, because I think this is really important to understand. So um, dualistically unified functioning opposites serve to help us heal and evolve. So then that moves us into the purpose of consciousness. So we've talked about the structure of consciousness as, a, as, a, uh, as the structure as it, it's cyclical. It's a, the prime symbol of consciousness is the circle. I also like to use the vesica Pisces. I'll be moving more into this. We're going to learn this. Uh, the function of consciousness. Because of the cyclic nature, we're dealing with enandiodromic laws of disequilibrium and equilibrium. Um, we're going to be... We're, then we're going to go into the purpose of consciousness, which is um, consciousness as a dualistically unified archetypal processes of healing the individual and the collective psyche. So the purpose of consciousness with these, with the structure and functioning is to heal, to evolve, to grow, to learn. Again, we go back to that Latin that I cannot speak. Evolutionis mundane anime. I think is how you say it, but it's basically the evolution of the world soul. And then we're going to be learning what archetypes are. Is it a static phenomenon? No. It is a living, breathing function of consciousness and exists because we have an external and internal realm. And then we'll be talking about the law of evolution which is, which Manly P. Hall talks about. Well, I'll be talking about Manly P. Hall. And I will make a list of all these wonderful teachers. Okay. So, <laughs> um, so we're going to be talking about the structure of consciousness, the function of consciousness, the purpose of consciousness, and then we go into the setting stage for consciousness, the environment for which consciousness exists, which is the external and internal domains, which I like to call the prime the prime dichotomy. Prime dichotomy is basically the external and internal domains of consciousness, which dualistically are unified in a procedural archetypal function. Um, and we're, and I will I always say that I'll go into this later. <laughs> Just introducing kind of the some of the concepts that I'm going to introduce.
We're also going to look at the prime dualistic unified archetypal process um, that is initiated with the cardinal points. Um, I'm not going to go into that right now. That's definitely something for later. Um, but the, the, the cardinal points are initiatory procedural archetypes. Um, these archetypes include the Great Father, Capricorn, the Great Mother, Cancer, the Great Spiritual Warrior, Aries, and the Great Lover, Libra. And these set the stage. These are the initiatory procedural archetypes that set the stage for consciousness. The uh, external, internal domains, and then the domain of self and other. Okay, so I won't go too much more into that. Um, we're eventually I'll be talking about the theme of Mundi, uh, the mythological horoscope, horoscope of the universe that the ancients left with humanity. Um, I'll be talking about how the theme of Mundi um, can overlap with the Yuga cycles, as proposed by Sri Yukteswar, and I'll be looking at prime triads. Uh, excuse me, the prime triad of celestial periodicity. Uh, the day cycle, the year cycle, and the great year cycle, and how these cycles actually teach us about the structure and functioning and purpose of consciousness and how um, these cycles mythologically form the procedural archetypes of consciousness. Um, finally, I'll be talking about um, the, the metaphysical laws of consciousness that are derived from looking at all these things above. Metaphysics is the branch of philosophy that deals with the first principles of things, including abstract concepts as such as being, knowing, substance, cause, identity, time, and space. So consciousness is obviously a, a metaphysical um, part of that, a part of the branch of metaphysics. And, um, but consciousness in this external reality in relation, in, in a interpolating relationship with the unconscious and the archetypes that are thus derived procedurally, um, form particular metaphysical laws. Um, and these are some of the laws that I've discovered are primary. First, we have the law of unification, um, Heraclitus, um, all is one, and in the one contains the opposites. We'll be talking about the law of derivation. We'll be talking about the law of periodicity by Buchanan. Let me pull this up. Oh, you're going to love this. Um, this is one of the most magnificent books anyone could possibly read. Um, I would love to reintroduce to contemporary times Joseph Rhodes Buchanan. Um, what a beautiful soul. He wrote, Periodicity, the absolute law of the entire universe, long known to control all matter, now revealed as a law of all life. Beautiful book. We'll be talking about um, the law of periodicity, um, as discussed by Buchanan, and overlapping that with um, astrology, astrotheology, and the like. All right, let me find where I was before. Here we go. Okay, and then we're going to be talking about, of course, my favorite law, the great law of Anandiodromia. It's dualistic unity in action. We'll be discussing the law of evolution, the law of dimensional influence, as um, introduced by my mentor, Kelly Lee Phipps. We'll be talking about the law of cause and effect, law of harmony and rhythm, the law of analogy, and the law of resonance. Um, these, these uh, the evolution, cause and effect, harmony, rhythm, analogy, and resonance, these laws actually... Um, were are discussed by Manly P. Hall. So he he um, so these are these are some of the things that he discussed. But these are other other laws that were derived from my studies and research of um, astro astrology, astrotheology, and spiritualism and occultism. So anyway, I really look forward to um, introducing all these things. That's a lot. <laughs> and so. But I've been studying this for a decade. <clears throat> I was going to write a book, but I was like, I don't want to write a book. <laughs> I'd rather just um, just put it out there on YouTube <clears throat> and fumble and bumble around and, and try to get myself to explain it better. It's not easy stuff to explain, but um, 
this is more interactive for me. I can't imagine sitting in my apartment alone by myself typing this all out. I'd much rather be, have an interactive thing. So what? So that's what this platform is for too. It's for me to share my ideas, for you to share your ideas, and for us to learn and evolve together and heal. And that's it. And so, um, yeah. So anyway, I put that out there. I hope I explained things as best as I could. I guess I guess I'm a little insecure. Um, this is like the first time I've gotten this out there and I I've I kind of gotten a, a I've gotten a a lot of sometimes negative feedback about my ideas and uh, maybe sometimes a lot of discouragement like oh my gosh well if you don't know how to explain this nobody's going to get it you know you sound pompous or whatever so I have these like I guess these like interjected uh, things that have kind of created some insecurity me and insecurity in me and I guess those are things that I I need to heal. Um, so that's part of what this channel is for too. It's for me, a place for me to be, to try to learn how to be my um, authentic, or be my, my healthy personified self. To be who I am in relationship to my authentic self. To learn how to do that, to be courageous in the act of, of doing that, and, and having the courage to share my ideas and having confidence and conviction of my vision um, and sharing that with the world in hopes that maybe the things that I have to that I have to say might help all of us it might help me and you and all of us all consciousness in this domain of reality to heal and grow and flourish into a beautiful, healthier, golden age of humanity, where is we are living copacetically and lovingly with one another. All right. Anyway, all right. I'll see you next time. I'll be oh, and uh, I'll be covering. Um, I've already covered the syllabus. I'll be talking about what dualistic unity is. I'll be defining and giving examples of dualistic unified functioning opposites. Um, uh, and I'll be going over healthy and unhealthy persona. You know, and that's the thing I have to too, is tell myself too. It's like, girl, don't be so hard on yourself. Have fun. I have to learn. Hey, wait a minute. Don't don't take this so seriously. Have some fun. Jeez. This, don't go on. Like, I do do that sometimes, especially since I have some borderline wounds trauma wounds it's like i take this too seriously i'm like oh my gosh people are not gonna like me well screw it if they don't <laughs> you do you like you yeah okay well then that's good enough <laughs> all right enough is enough <clears throat> i hope everybody has a great weekend mwah, mwah, mwah.